Horror Theatre presents More Dark by Laded Baron On the afternoon train from Plough Keepsy to New York City for a thing at the Kremlin Bar, John and me, an empty seat that should have been Jack's, except Jack was dead, going on three years, body or nobody. Hudson out the right hand window. Shining like a scale, winter light fading fast, blending the ice and snow and water in a st- steely red. More heavy weather coming, they say, said. A blizzard, the fifth as many weeks. One body blow after another for the north east, and no end in sight. We were sneaking shots of Greenwich from a flask. I watched the kid across the aisle watching me from beneath eyelids, the tint of blue black scarab beetle shells. He wore a set of headphones that merely dampened the death tones, screaming change. His eardrums were surely bleeding to match the trickle from his nose. He seemed content. Another slug of scotch and back to John with a flask. I thought of the revolver waiting for me in the dresser of my room, hotel room. I could hear it ticking. I dreamt about the, that fucking gun all the time. It loomed as large as a planet-killing asteroid. In my mind, shined with silvery fire against Saturn and nothingness, slowly turning in place. Sombronic prop from a last Hitchcock film. The answer to the meaning of my life. Your ultimate negation. A Rossi Point 838 special, bought on a cheap at a pawn shop on the 4th Avenue, now snug in a sock drawer. One bullet in a chamber, fated to nest in my heart or my brain. My wife of a decade had mysteriously, or not so mysteriously, one asked her friends, walked out six weeks ago. Suitcase in one hand, took it to Bahamas in the other. My marching orders were to be gone by the time she got back with a new tan. Yeah, I wasn't taking the divorce well. Not a fiasco with a novel. Nor a dozen impending deadlines. Chief among them, a story owed. ST for Dark Membrane 2. Anthology homage to the works of H.P. Lovecraft. This last item I hope to resolve prior to dissipating into ether. But at the moment, it wasn't looking favourable. Still, when marooned in the desert and down to crawling inch by bloody inch, that's what one does. Crawl and again. John said, I saw him once, for for me known as I well back. When the gang was in Glasgow for work on, me, Jack, Jody, Paul, Livia, Willem, Ellen, Canadian Simon, and English Simon, Gary Mack, Ian, Ian, Richard, G, both Nicks, Berkeley Nick, and New York Nick. Some of us, all of us wandering from pub to pub after the dark, Hale still lived in Scotland, so he showed us around, although he was drunk as usual. I figured we'd find... Con Hotel again by morning, if we were lucky. A busy crowd busted out of the crowd club, and it's this chick, leather jacket with hair shaved to about half an inch of fuzz and dyed pink, almost knocked me over as she held me, held me, me like a striker from Blackie Football Club. Hale stared at her as she stomped away and leaned over to me and whispered gravely, Whoa, lad, that'd be like a fool. Falling a coconut, wouldn't it? John was a tall, burly fellow of Scottish Irish descent, a J- adjacent professor at Sunny New Plaz. He wore glasses, tweeds, and a tie, whether he's lecturing or mowing the lawn. Once he usually appeared as if he had just mowed the lawn. Such was his habitable disheverment. Nevertheless, his charisma was undeniable. More you Breed grade, his hair thinned, the more irresistible the world at large have found him, especially the ladies. Like Mantravani, he is becoming dangerous in middle age. I hope to use his powers for good rather than evil. As John spoke, he cradled the marionettes, Poe, Poe, as you know, Bob, his lap. 
Poe, dressed in black, naturally, had a pencil moustache and over large silver eyes, all the better reflects so, sardonic emu inimai. As we know, Bob was clad in silvery oak coverall and collar, a space suit, sans helmet. Bobby's, Bob's shaggy hair and beard were white. His eyes were cornflower blue, with stoke earnest and honesty. He not wisdom, the puppets, or a loan from Claire, John's twelve-year-old daughter. She invented and become a world-class puppeteer. But like John Makrovitz and being John Makrovitz, disturbing but admirable. Let's be crystal clear. I hate puppets. Hate them. They descend from a demonic line, parallel to mimes and clowns, a holy of a devil, especially the lifelike variety. Canny Valley is not one I have ever enjoyed strolling through. John wasn't partially keen on, particularly keen on it, puppets either. However, as a prolific author, with a constant literary speaking engagements, he tweaked to the utility as icebreakers at readings and lectures where the audience was often mixed. The little bastards were perfect to talk down to the kiddies. As you know, Bob, this novel is the eighth in a saga of non ecodine horrors invading Earth from X space. While keeping the big high sc- keeping the high schoolers and adults reasonably f- muse throughout the exploratory his prohibitional phrase John thought, brought his marionettes because we were going to witness, a witness the best way to describe it, a public reading by the reclusive horror author formerly known as Tom L. Or simply L to his small but fervent cult of devotees. I featured puppets and marionettes in his tales, looting humanity's suffering at a whim of the gods, an old and quissive selection of things, such each handcrafted by master designer W. Lindbeld. A native of Texan bookseller, renowned for his macabre dolls, an enormous collection of rare and banned volumes, perverse occult lore. Also renowned for being a career felon, but didn't usually come up until whatever, whoever mentioned his name, who was drunk, as we're getting at the moment. I assume John hoped for an autograph, made a few words of kind kindership from L. I wasn't quite clear. Nor did I understand his obsessive fascination with the guy. There was skilled, if obscure, all for weird tales operating within the Prince Instincts, such classical masters Lovecraft and Rick, Rick Robert Elkerman, tempering from influence his own brand of dread and showmanship, much of it fueled by a loathing of corporate life. If one took him at his word, life itself He's written dozens of horror and dark fantasy tales over the years. The bulk of them collected the to me entitled Enemy of Man. The book was well sold well enough to warrant several foreign editions and garnered almost every ward in the field. It was the Washington Post proclaimed. It was as the Washington Post complained an instant classic. I owned a cheap paperback reprint of the original immaculate hardcover. I bet mine contained lengthy story notes and preface by the author. My impression of L's work was lukewarm as I found his gib poo pooping of the master Robert Elkerman a formative influence of his jingleness, considering their artistic similarities and L's reduction, human characters to ciphers, a trifle of plotting. L. the author was vastly more interested in ma- machinisms of malign forces against the humanity than the individuals involved in the said struggle. Nevertheless, his skill was an analogy. Simple, atmosphere, atmosphere a setting were impecca- was impeccable. His style unique, despite his debt to classical literary and necessity. Gloom and groan regarding the infernal bureaucracy wasn't my cup of tea. It possessed a certain renounce, renounce, and a self loathing, chronically imbruberated, perpetually, perpetually persecuted, persecuted set. However, there was the man himself. It was L, the man, 
that turned me cold. They all dwelt in the Marlborough, human heartland city. No independent confirmation of his residence and bold thighs were lacking. It had been abandoned by most of the severity, at least ha- and half, and at least half the rats, afflicted by severe mood disorder, retained few contacts among the professional writing community. Abandoned associates were luderate men, scholars and theorists such as himself. Perhaps his hermit philosopher Panos Vesnonia is what eventually can cemented the status of Quaso Guru, whose fictional meditations upon cosmic horror, man's minuteness, and in the galaxy gradually shifted to relentless pro pro solizing of ant till atalist propaganda, the form of email interviews, random tacks produced on a basement press, a one full blown trade paperback essay entitled Horror of Being or Hope, as his acolytes hoped it, damned it. The book was published to much clamour among his fans, turning round a golf collapse by the critics who wasn't who weren't certain which way to jump when it came to analysing L's eerie Louis Lucy. Nobody enjoyed receiving death threats of dead rats in the post. On the other hand, endorsing such maxisms as a kindness and most normal act, any sapient being any commitment to ever prosecute, and consciousness is an abnormally abomination, wasn't too spiffy on his journalist credentials. John continued, he stumbled back to the hotel eventually, although I didn't recall how he got there, I sat around the lounge confronting Paul about terrible, strange visas show-lacking on his, of his novel. Somebody on the staff had it in for him. No ways about it. Once HBO bought it for a series, her arse had sweetened right up about his new books, and SV begged him on a bending knee for an interview. How convenient, huh? Screw SV, that knob job who runs feature reviews, I said, and grabbed a flask for another swig. I always had the luck of the Irish when it comes to press, but strange reasons were the stories for the helmet suspect quality reviews department. Mainly because it's helmed by a blithering idiot, but desperately wanted to be his generation's John Clute, and was indeed doomed to a life of disappointment and neglect, which is which, while typically deserved fare for much British late scene, no doubt stung like a motherfucker. Among the Ezine's handful of reputable freelance contributors dwelt rotten cov ankle biters who were savage a book like a terror barrier, shaking a rat and a prince all over the bowl, drove traffic and brought some year any attention to themselves that would be otherwise lacking. If independent it's dependent upon their own merits. Look at me, for love of God, reviewers. Fortunately, no one actually read the rag, but friends, family, proofreaders, chronic masturbators, and agreed authors themselves. Holy shit, don't utter such heresy near me, John made a sign in the air. The words have eyes, of old eyes. Effing bastard Noel. Whatever, whoever, whatever, who is it's a thing. Will have me killed or battle blood, whether whichever is worse. Noel is so famous, respected, we need no nerve surname. He never heard of you. You'll be singing a different tune if he gets hold of your next book, you ham fisted hack. I don't know why he called you ham fisted. You're rather delicate, actually. Speaking of coconuts, I said. Oh, yeah, here we go. When I was a young stud, I dated this girl for a few weeks. It was only new, I was new. It was was all new and mysterious. We went to the ocean with another couple, had a fire on the beach, drank some wine, all that teasy, romantic sort of crap. Way home, me and the guy are on the front of his car, discussing rock versus heavy metal. Girls giggling and bickering in the back. I hear a single snap of a bra going on. Coming undone, moggling the smell, coconut scent. Boy's eyes pop out of his head. He almost swerves into a ditch, trying to adjust the rearview mirror. 
I turned around and by thunder, the ladies had peeled off their tops or giving each other coconut lotion rub down. In no logical reason whatsoever, except for our viewing pleasure. My God, whatever, trust me, words don't do the scene justice. Nothing like that ever happens to me. There were, there was a world of bitterness in that mission. I have lived a varied life, I said, short but varied. Great, now I got sidetracked with the visions of gleaming breasts. Yeah, there was a point to the, the bit, but Scotland, if only, if I could only concentrate. Elle is in the house, an easy guest in my part. But something in my brain shifted with rightness of it. The words were uttered, a phantom click of a pistol hammer cocking. Yes, the fabulous bastard materialised at the edge of the lounge near my bar. Lights are low, he looked ghostly in his white hair, wild hair, strange eyes. He wore an old-fashioned suit, a white carnation lapel. He carried black from cane, a twisted sinister accoutrement at cane. I bet there was a scavery sabre hidden inside. John Special was wistful as Bob's eyes were blue. I thought he avoided confidentions with his image, the hermit and all. So they say, although there are rumours, people know people, who spotted him at the bar sipping Arabic at the World Horror in 89, haunting the Hotel Tourist at the World Science Fiction Convention, 97, sitting in the back of the horror-lit panel, Comic-Con, whenever Jack swore. They had a ten-minute conversation in the green room, a red Readercon in 2007. There was a power outage and sat in the dark and smoked a joint and discussed the suicide cults in Japan. There's a haunted forest at the base of Mount Fuji. College students off themselves in droves every year. Suicide Mecca. Japanese government tries to keep it hushed up. But you know. For a man who loathes ex- 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 existence, you think you even. You'd be even more on board with suicide. It's right for others, not him. Oh, no, he's definitely against antilisp, a horror, suicide. Goes counter the code. Right, ending their miserable existences would try for the much greater joy of pissing and moaning about their miserable existences. That is big fun to inflict on one quotidian views upon the happiness. Hapless and gullible, some people born looking for a crock or shit to get their head stuck in. Jack didn't tell me he, he met L. He only mentioned it to me a few months before he died. Disappeared, whatever. That's unsettling, I said. I agree to... I have to agree, John said. But it's a coincidence. L didn't clip Jack. Hell, Jack probably didn't even really meet. He got high and dreamed the whole thing. Plus, the Jew was a hell of a liar. He laughed and had a drink by way of... June... Junior reflection. One simply didn't take Jack's name in vain. No, man, he said, I'm insightling because Jack was obviously hallucinating at the end. It's a sign of way too many drugs or mental illness. Maybe he's bipolar. He could, we could have helped him. I try not to wince at the irony of my vivisation. Sorry, but I just, not, I just got to keep my own... Uh, so what happened to Jack? For your information, I really did spot L. Michael C. Was sitting next to me. I see we saw the guy too. However, before he walked away, I ran over to see if I could flag him down. L was gone, baby, gone. Of course, of course, I said. And how many of the mystery? T- t- uh, how mystery? How many of the mystery role and ghosts and leprechauns? Michael has taken us for for a few drinks before the show. You can ask him himself. He's keen on the subject. Actually knows L from the old days. Calls them the cat food days instead of Saturdays. Last thing neither of us needed were more drinks. On the other hand, who was I to turn down a chance of booze of Michael C? No fur, nearly as cultish and with that exclusive as imitable L. Besides, Michael only drank the finest single malt. A spence be damned. The train rattled in the tunnel, darkness, by a faint plastic load of interior lights, a rush of vertigo, and tricked my body into believing in the very passion of vehicle. 
car no longer moved laterally, but had shifted to the vertical plane, extending at tremendous velocity, and express elevated until the pits shrieks of red flipped against the window. The kids with earphones glanced at me. His earphones resembled the curved horns of that lamb, ram. His eyes reflected the void. He smiled. His voice, the smile was a void. I gave him the finger. Michael C. waited at, waited us at the Grand Central Station. We immediately appeared a home in a wall with an Irish house band, a sexy bartender, decked in leather brush, 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 brush. Thank Jesus, Mary, the saints for those. Most of the clientele were Freerix bikers, imitation punk rockers. I expected their tattoos peeled and peacock hued, mohawks combed over to make office dress code come Monday morning. A garage music banged and wheeled and whitted with stops and gaps that hurt my brain. I'd have ran a graphic Glen Ruffs. We toasted good old dead Jack one more time. Michael was clad in black as ever. Black silk shirt and silk tie, black sacks and black wingtips. His hair was black and curled, spring tight. His pale gaunt of the cheek and wary of the hound, over rest, ever restless about actually twitching or fidgeting. His eyes, though, they shivered and crackled. He proved quite pleased as Custo L. Sure, he saw tying him and goes go. Jim was there, scoping the joint. I recognised him right away. What does he do? For a living, I mean. Anyone who knows anything knows writers don't survive off earnings. Writing will have real jobs such as teachers, dishwashers, drug dealers and crack holes. Works as an underwriter or writes technical manuals, research and development, an auto plant, or he heads a lab at a defensive contractor. Point is nobody knows what he does outside of writing because he says something different to whoever asks. William S. C. told me L brought several blocks of abandoned properties, but though he lives completely alone, pushes a shopping cart to from an outlet style like a bag lady, spends evenings in a stoop and a pair of John Lennon's and a peacock, smoking foreign cigarettes and watching kids smashing the windows of wrecked cars, sleeps in a king-sized poster bed, in a penthouse of a stoic brownstone, a used-to-be-famous hotel, where all the Motown singers and his ex held court. Just him now, a thing that go bump, thing that go bump in the night. Michael said, Poe, was experimenting with the marionette's stringing he, as he talked, calling Poe to strut and lurch on the table, topped with a creepy pantomime of moonwalking, then spinning like a 1970s, 1970s breaking dance king performing a hokey jerky trance Sixty seconds Michael got him more to hang of it than John had in a whole year. John shrugged and cheerfully kept at his all at or his scotch hugging Bob in a crook of his elbow like the protective father he was. I said, Don't, didn't an elephant be posted, suppose a blog is bloating. The myth of L. No, no, so no, Michael nodded. As a joke, yes, a tongue in cheek description. Well, mystique. Nathan thinks at least he f- likes to think. L didn't exist. If here is a few writers got together during the 1980s and created their own Rick should break Berman. He went as far as to get, get, as to go out that British, so far as to to out that British hack, MS, as one of the original instigators. Though that's mighty generous accreditation, considering my S best ideas will prove is written by Lovecraft, Ackerman. Oh yeah, I read some no something in a Mark S. The white pause. His bestseller moves f- thirty six copies of the British Fantasy Convention. When everybody got drunk and thought they were signing up for a charity drive, the white pause was followed closely by the man who collected Barbara Garland. John said, "We didn't do so hot, alas." Kick Larson and Commonwealth, I said. Does that even count? Nah, not really. I apologise. It wasn't. I hadn't thought much of Mark's. S's, white paws, the story bust 
Sorry, bastard. King worshipped on the altar of El. His work came off all the worse by the way of comparison. El light, so to speak. Sadly, he was famously murdered by another wolf and the English lady he cybersought for ages. There was an ongoing feud over a motivational story. Good old woman hating S wrote that painted her and an unrefractory light. Then the female author had the audacity to go and win the Vantage Fancy Award a few times while S was passed over a comment as usual. Despite his public disdain for interesting laurels accolades, he snapped again halting internet message boards a lady with rings entered posting pseudo-anonymous rants about how girls like her only won awards because they fetched looked fetching in a skirt. He finally crossed the line by rummaging through trash bins outside her apartment one night. She almost lost a witch due to the S relentless fear campaign. Sneaked upon him and cracked his skull with a bear the pen bear pin hammer off of his head and stod it the freezer behind a frozen butterball turkey or whatever the fuck brand is selling jolly old England she was currently finishing up a remarkable short stint of women prison and box sales were sensational at the S funeral reception was attended by exactly one person feared and ready gene editor S Jones who showed up for anything and offered free alcohol who once in famously held Mark S as a saviour of British horror, much to everyone's eternal chagrin. Ch- ch- At least at Jones sprang the reef hocus, the science fiction industry no, no, magazine, gives S a one sentence of predatory, which is more than they have given any of his books at least, all very lurid as befitted the community. Mark like said anyway, Nate hypothesized I was sin- syndrome was a significantly long con a spiritual grift dead letter drops fake mail email addresses phony other bios another photo of another guy dead since the roaring twenties started as a game each of them pinning gibberish and sending it to space and time horror show night cry etc etc got a hand in it says actually bought the stuff next thing you know Tom L is hot property and a one horror wonder kid your underground antidote to Chrissy McKing a brand Dean Coosey a Jack Spicer butt line to Ron McCurlin's yammering gob that is crackety horror as Sal got stale years ago, but yeah, these pranksters were stuck with carrying on the charade, hard to let go of their dvority checks. They finished wrong, of course. A husband of ill since 1888. We had pen pals on the internet for a while before he got so inclusive. Met him on five occasions, went to his house again. The man is real as real gets. You visited his house, God damn it. John pounded the table with his big fist. Oh, a shotgun glasses jumped. That pissed me off more than the story you told me on the train. He glared at me. Today is a day to face the fact you're frustrated on fifth field, son of a bitch, I said. If you rather ogle Earl's house and coconut oil dripping off a perfectly brown breast, well, I'm not certain what kind of friend you are. There's no reason I c- can't do both. Michael continued patiently. It's just an apartment. L stayed in after his wife died. Disappeared, similar to Jack's situation. Whatever the case, L camped out for a while. But he picked up and moved to where he is now. Nothing special. That apartment needs as you please, though. Sterile was a journalist's office. What? No copies of the narrow column lying on a coffee table, I said. Probably sarcastically fully just some think about the history of puppets nobody's hanging in the closet either I didn't ask the office that what L was like because it didn't give a shit so I asked about my good old buddy Nathan instead where's Nathan he is in town right Nathan had been in the bar pretend with New Orleans during the night dr- adults he got a night out right before the hurricane and floods. His daughter was 13 and working a PhD in nuclear physics at Caldeck. Meanwhile, he lived in a shack in South Carolina and wrote the most delicately horrific 
Keep your short stories I ever read. Another recluse dam we had a le- at least that much in common with Tommy L. No hell of a thing then, Bit and Paul of Boston were up north visiting Chris- Canadian Simon at some podunk book festival. These current licks release a chap book every other effing weekend, it seems. Paul got hurt in a sledging accident. Broke his wrist, but he's okay. None of the Canadians of the sled were injured. Nate should have gone sledding instead of doing what he was doing. Contacted a mess of flukes, so he's getting dewormed. Gonna be a while. Dewormed, I said. He's got worms, no shit. That's that's what flukes are, worms. John said, so drunk he sounded sober again. No shit, Michael made us say up sign. And he's crappy spaghetti for six, six weeks minimum. And we know he don't drink the water out of there. I said, mentally challenged children know it, John said. Making a huge gu- take, taking a huge gulp of whiskey, you're beginning to worry me. Maybe he's not got them directly. Got them directly from Simon. I said, "I care for the sick to booze north of rain. I don't kiss Canadians ever." Michael said, "Had me pose rains." He rose in the sudden grace of the mentors. Fetch another round, brimming with mugs of the honey mead. I not tasted before. Kind of earthy, corporate aesthetic. I felt like fur sliding down my throat the wrong way. My eyes watered and the hairs of my nose bristled. A rare cask, he said. I asked what it, the fuck it was. This is the only place in New York we found a priority. I only serves it to certain customers on special occasions. I am such a customer, and a live reading is by Lael is definitely a special occasion. There's an arrow to old quotation to, to the moon three hours John said half a maiden and ponty Bazaar printed it the clincher Michael said well the blue blazes is so special about his reading his reading besides a kooky horror offers showing his face in public for once instead of staying in it with the cats I said laying it in my mouth my head felt half starved in in Saved in. Another part of my brain was turning over possibilities of like a kid blooming rocks with a stick. And part of me imagined that liquor was so rare, so exotic. Michael paid for it with a black AMX card. He only used once a decade for this single event. A promise of services to be rendered later. For sexual services. This simply had to be the donkey show of Gourmet Brouch. He regarded our one another for a few moments then he leaned closer to his chest chin with a little tabletop and said okay look here's the thing you rubles gonna know every especially you john boy first l won't be showing his face at all this is a new deal he wears a costume he doesn't speak i laugh right he doesn't speak he does not oh yeah john said wait meant to tell you that tell you the guy the guy Michael shushed him for a hard look. No, no, don't spoil the fact. We'll see, we see him we'll see him soon enough. How does he orate if he doesn't open his mouth? I said, feeling very drunk and very petulant. Pretty soon, were you telling me the arsehole didn't walk, but floated as if a penguin trotted up by only tiny elves in rhinestone jumpsuits. The panther like charades and interpreted dance. You see, Michael said, and his eyes shimmered with a void I had been noticing more and more all round me each day. And, oh, man, it's weird, John, said happily. Oh, actually, he pitched his voice to the first said do, and held it as if you know Bob in the front of his face, pretend the puppet was adding his two bits of the conversation. Yes, weird indeed, Michael said, bashing Poe in a similar manner. You see, you see, I do hope it's something new. I said, oh, choosing to ignore the foolishness. I kept the cut paper work of Emily Mann in the bathroom. I read the thing cover to cover twice. Yes, yes, you were in luck, run free. Leo's written a fresh book of essays, a penny volume of horror of being. No one other than his agent had been 
would ever glimpse of manuscript, but the world is his masterpiece. To tell his fifty year olds a spleen and one raging a splomus satirical ominous. It's called a beautiful thing that awaits us all, a howling void of darkness. So I imagine Michael said that with what I swore with a shiver of delight. It's going to be the amphetalist that Ron Howard did for the whack jobs waiting for to be whisk to, to yog off by the ETs, John said. Time and space diluted, so did a tavern. The heads of everyone else, John and Michael were forgiving, were Thanksgiving parade floats to, to the chairs, shrugging, amused by my antiquism. Towards all things ill, I would say, I sh- I could I could see I would see, I would see. The next thing I called, he disappeared about to the subway, Brooklyn. While on the do- Zeus angled steps of Kremlin Bar, around and round the rows and rows, from the literary icy darkness of New York world at night, the velvety gloom of interiors I had their day. Seen a lot of blood from the inners of poets and booze and bullet holes. Wood creaked beneath our shoes and brass gleamed here and there, but between folds of curtains, the space around the bar was capability, with audience a buzz rather than spoke. A living, breathing, perfectly commuting yin yang symbol, intimate, per- impersonal, as an ar- Arctic cell field. Everything smelled of cigarette smoke and liquor and smoke, sweet perfume and must, a golden green taste. Exactly like the last round of mystery mead we shared in a nameless tavern. I've been in the business a while, but though I recognise occasional face such as Dean Radio host, show host, a couple of editors and agents, a handful of local authors, most were strangers to me, seldom glimpsed of wildlife, they crept from the forest depths to gather a solid grid laid and listen to Pan Wheeldle, his recorder by the dark of the moon. Literally the dark of the moon as a glance of my watch confirmed. Clips John mentioned earlier will be in progress so any moment. I was an interloper, a blasphemer. I half expected a torrent of white blood caposes to crush forth and consume me the hostile bacterium. John and Michael shouldered a path to a reserved spot in a corner beneath a green old shady dragon lamp. His radiance made our hands glow against a tablecloth. Ellen and famed editor and hostess at the moment, came by and said hello, snapped our pictures, and brought us another round in recognition of Jack's empty seat. I just pulled the whiskey straight down my gut, in order to be to its puny effects, I waited for whatever was coming to come. Tom Hale was a, in an event not evidence yet. His table of honour lay near this burnished wooden podium that propped up many iterations, a crazed catastrophic Tassifully in inverted authors. A table was tenanted by two women, a blonde and brunette, silky seaf dresses, a man in silky turtle neck. A man was handsome and clean shaven. A one the way one can get with a straight razor. It reminded me of the actor John Michael Vincent during his youth for his sk- sk- sot some chick in a jaw for handing his girlfriend on an eight ball at a party and tanked his career. I hadn't thought of Vincent in ages. I looked headlong at the women's 
or in some more undecided, they weigh out my league, no matter how smashed I might endeavour to get. Both wore long velvet gloves and smoked cigarettes with healthy toity guitar. Cigarette holders neither wore the Damien puppy stole. That wouldn't have surprised me in Iota. Jump in, Judge Josephus. That's W. Lamard, John said, rattling his puppets in excitement. That's W. Lamard, I said, and rolled my eye. Is that Jane Van Michael Vincent, woman of the stage? No way. Oh, my God, the parcel of her is in the house. Eee, I heard another woman exclaim. Sophia, he flew in from Texas, John said. Who wouldn't, Michael said. Oh, for fuck's sake, I said. I wish I might leave for another shot. Dagargan world fine, worked fine. Philosophy behind hope, though, hate, hope was becoming more appalling by the second. Every necktie made me think of a noose as solid overhead features. Yimbard isn't available in the UK, Michael said, lowering his voice, like he was conspiring to knock out over the joint. Later to see rap, I don't know all the details. Certainly got in hot water regarding some rare book that was up for grabs, the black market, by the way, of Finland. All those wary Finns. They are bedding wall going down in some rickety rick- rick- warehouse on the Thames, and the barbies bursted in and clapped the whole lot of iron- irons against twenty different corridors c- for frantic midnight calls. The bars chummy with more pr- Arabs and Bush families, so getting the governor to pinch it didn't help. It wasn't much of a trick. Of much legal finessing, he was sprung on the promise he wouldn't show his face in England for a while. That in a nutshell is that. Must have been a hell of a time. Not a kinky unity for you to me. I said, not really. It was a foreign edition, a US uh, weird almanac, an occult guidebook. Rather incredulous, you've asked me. He did a dime in Huntsville back in the late seventies for catching somebody broke a wine bottle. I said with a brave respect. Lived on main streets close to the bone. I look at these M- MFI. A Lombard was a derelict, like fifteen years or something. L befriended him, scraped him out of the gutter, and gave him purpose. Heard that from Lee T knows everybody in Texas. Got his ears to the ground. A sexy little twerp. Over there, did not did not do a hard time in Huntsville. I said, trying to remain cool. Are you sure as shit didn't do hard time in Huntsville in the seventies? Too pretty, too young. Look at those soft, infeminate hands. Looks sort of hard to me, John said. Achieved arch of his brow. Lucky's powers didn't work. A suave ex-cons. Older than it appears, Michael said. All of you ladies, a miracle product. Rubbed my temples and counted to ten. Thank God, right then, two things happened. Elaine saw my plight and brought me another triple, whatever was cheap at the bar. Tom L. drifted from a shrouded oak grove and stood near his trio of groupies. Stood my new, now sat. One of those K, that's a big dude. I drank up and plucked my empty, but on my empty, my empty on the table and gulped. Just like everybody else. Behold the man, John said, with or without irony. I was too bombed and too awestruck to make that call. The idle life of cliche to fit the preparation is all well to know. It's considerably six foot high and broad as a proverbial barn. The bulk was composed in a heavy robe of crimson silk, pulled around and hid. He presumably high fused feet he wore what I could only describe as executor's hood also crimson silk no flesh was available no even a glint of his eyes for the black hood slits he stood motionless a statue briefly emanated had shambled into view as now once again frozen in place so he made his great size and soliloquism the inscrutability of his slits of his eyes and mouth a blithe oblivious of his current gone entourage as they chatted among themselves ignoring the giant entirely sacred and living bejeebus out of me 
scared, scared the living bejeebus at me, scared me the level with coyotes and lizards and rolling, lonely rolling tumbleweeds held sway. A polar bear beached itself upon an ice shelf, heard the seals, and the seals barked with joy, witless of their mortal danger. I seen a picture of there once, a canny shot of him, a short coat and a bad haircut. Hunched to the c- actor stubbing a cigarette into an ashtray, grimacing at the camera as a thief with his hand in his teal might. A greeny, fuzzy, slightly out of focus picture, but clear enough to con- contextualise the presence of a person in the frame. It's literally utterly incoterous, the figure in crimson. All following the photograph was average size and built. No way, no m- how. M- no, ma- no, how the same individual is behaving as holding court, I said, and much of my co- such of my comrades. He changed over the years, Michael said. It's rather uncanny, I admit. How can you be sure it's even him? How else could it be? I glanced at my empty glass and went aside. Could he be motherfucking Patrick Ewing in there? For we know, a crowd apparently significantly lubricated in preparation for the anointed moment. Elaine made my way to podium, where po- podium, where she effectively introduced her guests. I was in the man who needs no introduction. Please help me welcome Tom L to the Kremlin. Pause followed. Although none of raucous hooting or whistling and usually accompanied, Prince a famous old popular author. The room subsided a deep and reverential hush. The giant ascended the dullest, the slow, measured hush suffle, and then loomed without flexing a muscle or uttering a word for at least a half a minute. Silence gathered a weight. A current began to calculate through the room, a lamp dimmed further than he, d- he dimmed. Air became already massive form, seemed to absorb the light. A black hole bends and deforms everything as it will. His silk uniform shifted black. He was lined in white, like a white hot edge of a blade. Yes, my senses were swimming for enough scotch to paralyze a rhino. Nevertheless, his powerful forces were in play. Perhaps between perform and audience were unmistakable, unmistakable, unnatural. Even though nothing was happening, everything was happening. I thought of the shivery moon going back dark of the city, behind Luna's shadow. Mars through Pluto falling into a rad- radical severity, cogs linking and locking along axial darkness. <sighs> Elsa's sleeve rustled with her inner life and slowly horribly from its curvous steps breathed a puppet the thing that emerged was the girth of a toddler soft and yellow as a caved bone and glistening with sheen of jelly it wore a skull cap rusty bells dark as a coat a red cloak and leg leggings a diminutive well-formed jester the monk of Christian law misshapen malignant demolic this hand puppet countenance was remarkable as it jaded so moving it cock eyed and demented smirk his arms were over long his spiny hands and fingers mockeries of human proportion the hands were restless they withered and gestured both languid and sporonic Craig Grishel and Plas- Plasid. <sighs> the puppet eyed the audience, tilting his head and shuttering one off kilter eye than the other. I reached out with a deliberate nurse of a, a, a heightened spider, extending a power of Pope to change, taste human, to taste prey, and tracked the microphone. During none of these done, Crotty's articulations, then the telling. Formal But during none of the creatures are consist arctic relations did them tarry form L so much as twitch, so dexterous were L's manifestations. Probably needed to be operated wholly independent from the man himself. But it's Stayed abruptly, breathing the whole man alert, low, low, low repeating to sing, Happy birthday to you, Miss President. I am Mandy Hall. 
After a pause, there was a groan, like an asthmatic. Tonight I shall recite a story, created by my benefactor and improbable L. It has never been told. It's a true story. The voice seemed to animate direct from the puppet's twisted lips. Imagine the heads of everyone at every table in the rich room, disembodied and attached like a ripe fruit to the branches of a tree in a field. A huge leafless tree it is so wide of dross as field. The field is back dark. And of a tree so, so dark, flesh and warm, whatever it does not live so much as it persists, struggling, suckling the life between them as its own fibre, its own fruit, its essence of cannibal of itself. Hanging friends, you can't mention neighbours for yourself. Do you not speak, cannot speak, for their mouths and yours are crammed with bloody seeds. You and they hung from the black tree, black field that is tamaracks, infirmitrated by two flames, the heads of the seeds glow with fire, swelling the fluffy maggots of deadly light. You sway in the breath like jack-o'-lanterns, cannot utter protest or question your maker or petition your accuser. You are muted by choking mouthfuls of gore. This is hell, my friends. It will continue and con- continue to eternity until it comes something worse. Something worse? Repeated something worse at least twenty times. Imperceivable, growing, lowering its voice until the words showed off. As though this spectacle were pronounced and found unease, I found a man hopeless state, no colony of fire ants might feel fresh crawling. In that petition, and petition, interpretation, the grotesque swarm, an endless, nevertheless, surrenderous, superterrendous glance and room would confirm that every person was slack jawed, faces shining in rampant concentration, with their bodies faded into lumps with a deepening shadow. John and Michael had completely forgotten my presence. Then, again, then along with some, everyone else, the Kremlin. There was some distant stone stage in hell, hanging for the tree of anti-life. Manabold hmm. said, Now imagine the hours passing, the days, weeks, months. Imagine the flesh decorated with legacies for bone, hair pilling in stripes. The blackbirds feasting on eyes, noses, tongues. But you see everything that happens. Feel every crisp inch of yourself slavering down the cloaks of the flock. I rose and lunched, lunched to the bar, hand coming good ear to block the persistent drone. Man of oration. A blood taker didn't even meet my eye when I demanded a shot. He grabbed a fresh bottle of Johnny Walker and shoved it at me. I cracked the seal and had a full worthy of Lee Van Cleef and Lee Marvin combined. I listened against the rail, grasping for breath, and a few moments distracted me whatever malevolent shit a puppy, puppet was spouting. Hey there, say that a blonde for now, the table said, sliding back to me, or so red lips were near my neck. The heat of her tongue, tracing my skin and collaboration of glaucol, igniting my veins. Her body lotion was lilac and water. She laid her hand on my thigh, and didn't exactly smell, but made an expression something like me. me. Buy a green old drink? She took the bottle and sipped, delicate and ladylike, for, for her um, smile widened. You seem sad. It is because you were alone. I were friends, I said, compassious, conscious of thickness of my voice, wondering whose intrusion upon the scene would cause the crowd to turn on me, hiss at me for silence. No one seemed to notice. There were room for wax dummies glued to their seats, heads fused, gazes fixed upon a podium. Only the brunette and the man and turtleneck were watching us. Both of them were doing an unsmiling thing. Don't worry about those people, the blonde said. A hot breath, hot and sweet, with Johnny Walker. We we're all alone in the world. She was a true blonde. Her roots showed dark where the plot side ran thin. Oh, of course we are. That's why I'm sad. Man alive. I carried a torch to Julie Andrews. You're more of point, but I'm not too... But I am not picky. 
It's a different thing entirely. Sun and moon, heaven and hell. Her fingers roamed on my thighs, she talked. Strange, though, rather than erotic. Dritching in a size as Madrigal's hand movements of Jack's bewildered walking. I opposed one walking as Michael pulled his string. I stuck my hand, although jester, at my hand, although jester, seemed superfluous at this point. I'm. We know who you are, Mr. B. We certainly you recognize enough. One squints well, just right. What's your name, baby? I am W. Labard. Who else? She slept, slept her eyes. Perilously over my near my crutch and treat my nose. Lean back and laugh coldly. Over his shoulders a man in Tubernet gesticulated and pampanoined the blonde's motions. Behind her manibold is that to pantomime of Mr Tiltonek. A wise Puto groaned and rolled off in its axis. I fucking knew it before would be something like this. I had to chuckle, though. Last time a beautiful woman approached me at a bar, she bought me a scotch and then asked her if I found Jesus. J.C. was still missing, apparently. Of all the poor smucks in this joint, you had to pick on me. The only one rough and rude enough to be to interrupt this monotonous momentous performance, this ritual, will open on the way the bridge and gulf between new stars and old ones. He laughed a dog's laugh without changing expressions. Oh, okay, music, amazing work with a puppet. I'm sure it's one of yours. You may refer to puppets as it, as it. Refreshing, most people say he or she. My sense of a bring in the objects, sexual characteristics, even in jest. So there's a world of, about you. In this case, you're more correct than you could possibly conceive. Precise term, in fact, none other would do. Moreover... Marion Abold, in no intention of mine, I came from no elsewhere, is a traveller, a visitor. A backyard, well, Abold said, something worse, something worse, something worse. Kept chanting it and chanting it. Several listeners joined in, and soon it was like a church rival meeting, the parishes chorusing the right reverend's punchlines. All the lights had died except for the one hanging directly over the podium. Between the first row, all was darkness. A blonde and I sat bumping knees in the darkness too. Blonde's face blended in light. Her eyes gleamed right through, seeming to hang in a blank space. Why the ring? She's gone, she's gone, she's gone. I don't understand, didn't understand for a moment. Then reached his me for my throat, where I kept my wedding ring, on a chain under my collar. The ring was an empty gesture, but not let a nodiness change anything. I saw the empty conjured Oh, I couldn't decide how to feel. So tilted, uh, tittered uneasily. Nice, you are. Are you a cold reader? No diversions for old bodies. There's pet poodles in Manhattan. I like Rick James and long walks on the beach. Maybe I'm too far forward. And I sweet weakness of read minds is part of trick. Free of charge, so you had to guess. Why do you think your woman left you? Leave me? Huh, she kicked my ass to the, to the curb. Why do you suppose this sad thing has occurred? Why is the centre of the universe as soft as a tootsie, pulp, unlinating, no, no sludge, serrated by an orchestra of idiot fantasialisms, playing hell to the chief? Fair enough, she said. Want to get out of here? I said. Her eyes burned like coals, a minute Oh, go. You're thinking of our Lord's Saviour. That's a, that's a fascinating case. Is this a long story? Because. Silence, fool, that Christ was a puppet. Streams played by masks in the gallery of stars. Kind of truth that would have you burned in early days. Parabedin, God, and Aleppo. Christ and Pocono, Mercio. Surely an absurd this delight. I think the supernatural element is bunk. A lazy toy telling to boot. The holy Carpenter was only a simple lunatic with delusions of grandeur. Makes his fate all more grisly. Don't you agree? Suffering was ultimate expression of form. Torturers long ago discovered a pleasure and pain a distinguishable after a certain point. Jesus elaborated as the thorns hung in and the spearhead stabbed. 
He waited in vain for his imagery of imaginary father. Suicide is sin, so they say. Unless you're a martyr, the green ain't go. Don't have to be hard, even though it's harder for some. Some are a talent for destruction. I swallowed seventy stupid bulls, half a magnum raspberry champagne on bottom right. Now my scar has a mess. Homecoming cream with my sister, if you can believe. She stuffed it right with a bag of bleach of her hair. Face on New Year's Eve, 2001. Bitch is better at everything. I froze dreams of semi-anonymous face affair. The well, well blow job in a bathroom across the hall going down like the Titanic. So to speak, and consider the possibility, besides obvious derangement, the woman m- might be physically dangerous to me, especially in my current helpless state. Seeing and taking the tones and the long conda, it was from the Jungle Book cartoon, memorising the slap, Montgomery, in its early eyes, and a thespian list, trusting me. It would seem wiser to keep my trap shut and grunt non-committally, is what I did. She said, but he's beyond all this, he finally knows. He's real boy now. What does Jesus know? The obvious answer could, would be anything at the right hand of God and such. He's seen the beautiful thing that awaits us all, but he's from the bottom of the pole, beneath everything. If you're saying shit rolls downhill, I had to concur. I turned away and she grabbed my wrist. Her flesh was icy beneath her gloves. I witnessed Christ broken upon the cross. The sky burned. Christ's battered face was my own. The sky dimmed and starless black. I filled his eyes with a void. Jesus, I said. I blinked rapidly and flinched from the woman. Convinced he somehow projected his image into my brain. Muck abode. Mandibold cried, Death is the aperture. Kaffir told is the truth. The beginning, the beginning, my sweet ones. More fearsome words have ever spoken. A vile threat ever uttered. Yes, there are worse things. Worse things. Death is not among them. The blonde's grip tightened and tightened. Oh, yeah, and a condo, right? That's good, good boy, she said. Her many teeth glistened as she eyes glinted. Not a servant, but Muntra's rat would tam, tam, or by Tom upon a claw, and please, says Punch. Good old Punch. Oh, maybe, just maybe. It was Judy who became a real girl. I can see you seen infinite dark, infinite cold, infinite sleep. Much better than an alternative. In infinitive existence as a disembodied spirit. Awareness for eternity. All you have to do is let go. Let Manabold eat your conscience. Then trot back to your little hotel room and do a go on a permanent vocation. My choice is on being via having my mind dissolved or be a screaming head for eternity. What the fuck happened to door number three, I said. Be glad of the choice. Most don't receive one. Talk of L after the gig. He can help you get your mind right to, for the voyage into nothing. Don't quit your quest a few miles from home. Don't linger like an MP and die of a tumour. Last days spent wasting away of on tins of cat food, difference to the universe. Don't end it foaming and raving in a ditch. A dear old Edgar did. Who came to your who who came to your grave? A flower, brass apparently. Every winter mark your sad demise. Don't you don't rate, rate. I you don't rate. I'm afraid. So in cold and hard pressed against my temple, crossed away, manabold, hallowed in a shaft of hellish angelic light, far wandering icy light of devil stars, swiveled and stared into the gloomy dr- gloom directly at me, into me, a winked, an abyss was revealed. Oh, that was it. What is this bullshit again? A bulb in a liquor case. Beyond the bar blinked to life. The diving bell surfacing from the dips. A well famous publisher, G V S J J V J appeared and pied a bottle from the woman's hand, where she struck it on my head. Go tell Tom, I don't care how many horror I just guilt wards. He's got rushing on his mental. I don't I still don't recognise it not I don't, still don't regret a punishing that crap. It's, it's, 
a sway, sway couldn't steal the study dolls. A shoot away, you treated to a friend with a hiss and glare. JVG owned a vulnerable science fiction magazine. Give me my first pro sale. I haven't seen it since the previous year's world fantasy convention. Thanks, I said, slumping with sudden weariness. Quite a scene one minute. I'm lucky. The next. I don't know. I don't, the next. I don't even know what. You won't get in lucky, farm boy. In New York, we call that shit getting unlucky. Take a head trimmer to that beard you might not scare away. Or nice girls. Oh, on a second thought, write something remotely commercial for once. Yeah, try that second thing. Gaze like a man with folding green, I said. Ain't that the truth, my friend? He smiled sadly. Look me in the eye. The secret is chicks don't dig so them. Where are the horrors? They am like S. So don't be that guy. A little less of your Harry James lover, Grandpa's favourite toilet reading, and a bit more 21st century. Coming to light, I didn't have the heart to crack wise or to confess. It was way too late to career to find his shift. We listened as manifold dispassionately described skulls stripped of bloody bone, kicked around equivalent by a Christian soccer field, like the guards cheered and dribbled each other in the grandstands. But for me, the seal was broken. I said, not giving Tommy Boy the spring cover, huh? G.F.G. shrugged and adjusted his buddy holly glasses. I'm immune to the charms of Fido, for saying, saying, horror writers, their vampire bride and drages. Will I see horror? Come see my three-year-old. A bottle of cement, rubber cement did the to the cat, a slush pile of slush manuscripts on my living room. Gonna have to bite the bullet and do electric one these days. Just remember something, okay? Don't know what the spooky chick told you, what you got planned, but the only thing that changes when you check out is nothing ever changes again. It's no different on the other side, no different at all. With that, he squeezed my shoulder and darted back to the shadows. Good deed for the evening accomplished. The faithful shall be eaten first as a reward. Non-believers and scoffers are faithless. Shall be eaten last for not at all. As for you, my sweets, your fate is this. Manable cease speaking. Miss sentence and came revert. As slowly as it appeared, its body now receded into L's sleeve. See you can collapse upon the brief, discomforting jangle of rusty bells. Echo Poe in a cask of aluminio, the masonry of actual catacombs, a whiff of smouldy death. The lights brightened and the audience awakened, table by table from its days and clack with sustained apparition. My daughter was down, but near for empty. I snatched it and sealed away before the bartender remembered to charge me. One the road to El Dorado. Okay, you keep an eye on your buddy here. I'm going in, John said as I returned to my spot. He smoothed what remained his hair, pooped, scooped up, as you know, Bob and Poe, and charged off to meet his new destiny. L had inspiratorily for such a hulky man, retreated behind the beaded, beaded curtain of his alcove. A candle lighten flickered hurkily to the other side. A conga line form, quickly formed at least a half. A dozen starry-eyed supplicants burying books tattered magazines from the gory days of commercial horror lit in John's case a pair of cheap marionettes swiped from his kids good luck pal I said to myself as Michael rolled his seat drooling and muttering imperfection perfections in a pig latin far beyond praying John's departure my goosing my head 
I killed a bottle and left it crossways. Among the cascade of empty glasses made for the stairwell, we proved jam with a secondary crowd of night owls who knew nothing about the reading we just survived. The beautiful thing that we will embarred swore awaited us all. We were instead standing on a line for the midnight jazz club upstairs to throw open its doors. How nice for them to be them. Be, how nice for them to be them and not us. No one stood in its side, kissy face, two nomads with another, two intoxicated by their own adorableness. Each of them looked elbow and flank in a swanky retro mass. I pushed my way through the gauntlet of cocktail dresses, fairy bowers, and pinstripe suits to white feather doors. The people smelled pretty, and all I could do see with their fucking sc- with their skulls dangling in hell fuck you Tommy Lee fuck you and your little hand puppet too freezing rain tick tacked on the sidewalk awing the roofs of parked cars tied the colour of my overcoat and hunched in the stairwell staring at smoke of a drunk woman balanced on her high heels as she waved a cigarette and crackled into her cell phone the air was still chilly enough to be sliced through the fog and remained to me remind me how much alcohol I had guzzled over the past few hours the first time since I walked to Carolyn I realised that John waited for me in dresser George Lake uh, Hotel a psycho blonde had accused me of loneliness that wasn't quite right loneliness isn't, doesn't justify self-destruction despair and grief self-loathing self-incrimination failure and desertion those were justifications. Yet the whole suicide plan seemed laying the frigid glare of the lamps along the boulevard of Piker's Lament to avoid paying the tab. Richard's service once said dying is easy. It's a keeping on living that's hard. Of course, the poet was on the money. As poets usually are when it comes to smugly self evident fermentations. I managed to blast a hole from my skull, less because of its multiple heartache, but more because I've become too weak and too chicken shit to carry it across one more goddamn bloody step. A marble was going into the bag. I was headed home exactly like any selfish, self indulgent fifth grade snot who wouldn't to do where wouldn't to do when confronted with one losing throw too many. It was almost as side of us the woman screeching into the phone for cigarette, but despite the fact was a smoker when John and Michael burst through the doors yelling and frelling their arms I didn't send a word. A string of glutticals, yelps and clicks and snarls. They were men with hyena heads. That did the trick. Leaned on the rail and vomited up the dark heart of the universe. Michael went his way, barking at slow, closing taxis. Refused to stop while Michael and I hustled and caught the last train out of the city. Our, well, our car was empty, a throng of night shift workers pressed on one lonely stop. Seemed to take our measure with exchanges of warning looks, moved on to the next car. Some dealt with same deal with squad off duty immigrants a few minutes later. John and I didn't say much. His face resembled 40 miles of bad road. Country philosopher might say, head dishevelled or mattered, eyes bulbous of street red, a nutty bloody connotation. The gentle professor's bark stripped to veal a carving, primitive beast in the mouth of his cave. His puppets were in worse shape, or oh, puppet. He came from the Kremlin with Poe dangling with his fist. As you know, Bob, conspicuously absent, missing an action, as it were. The train jarred to its travel the rails, and my teeth clicked, and the lights threatened to extinguish every few seconds. 
Poe's wooden body lay flopped neglectfully across the worn spot of John's knee. A puppet head not rivally against a metal seat divider. Something in John's demeanour made me loathe to pre- broach the subject. That's I satisfied my deepening curiosity with those sidelong glances. We men often shoot at daring cleavage of dude standing at the next funeral. Rhinal. It was Poe that attracted my attention. Poe's vivid warped away wood and plastic dew was exposed to melting heat. One eye was lost in a slag, the other crept towards the hairline. No longer fashionable softball, that eye now an oblong black marble or an over large pit of rotten piece of fruit. I recalled Madame Bowles' loving and loveliness description of bloody seas and thought that yes, blood oath doth turn black. Poe's eyes was a seed of corruption, corroboration, in a membrane of evil. It wasn't watching me from my poor absurd mind. It was easy swallowed the premise like I swallowed so much Scott. Scott's Poe wasn't watching anything. Whatever energy might have been printed upon its it was kind from kindness. Love was gone. My recognition a little puppet had been flirting the dead, alien husk that neither Claire doting joy nor John parental prevalence had done fuck all to vent such an ominous transformation caused by rebellious innards to gurgle and shift. I dare not dwell on as you know Bob's fate. That steady tip tapping tipping tapping a pose skull against the metal was too much to end in the end I said did you get his autograph L doesn't sign autographs anymore please speak don't speak don't sign books what does he do I said trying to laugh a smell of anything remotely human while well, I waited a string of ghostly lights of electrical substation floated past the window trailing into a liberation John smiled a wild, covered his swoon of jaws and teeth. It was good. He was. He wants what's best. What's best? He's coming out of the cave. Got to. Can't go on like this. Got to come out of the dark. A years of John drunk, sober realms between those antelopes. His tone was a new one, a slow thing unfamiliar, a film thing dredged in a speech upon the deep sea. Tonight had been a night of um, eight such girl concurrencies, considering my circumstances, perhaps, punching his spike. Bizarre was appropriate. My karma, his karma existed. The universe kept tabs, its own intensible fashion, mindless of gravity. We disembarked at the final station, slouched past dim and silent crocuses, through fusty glass doors in a gathering storm. John pulls at a trash bin and whispered to Poe. They sneered and dropped the puppet into trash. I walked on without a blackwood glance. I called out a feeble goodbye. John returned with a professionally wave. He was in a car, his door funking shut. I started my own rental and drove to the hotel near the Newburgh airport where the night men had on a soccer game. I was relaxing with a big stack of John Chick pamphlets. I bought a soda for the machine in the hall because my tongue was swollen and livery. Man, it was a letdown. I peeled some bills off the dwindling roll. Let them on the coffee table for the maid hoping she'd get them of the cops and medics were done I sat on the edge of the smooth bed the sterile neat as pin one hundred and twenty dollar a night hotel room began the snow and flakes piled against the window television was broadcasting nonsense chains of American flags sun and moon sliding atop one another to make black rings my wife's face and the face of the enemies strangers the Nazi aiming his fifth rifle now there's black tribal leaders clothed racing across the moor snarls done in each orca, red ochre surface keening in the temple my wife again and again a man of old cutting through it all speaking in the tongues except for one clear strain in the chronography Clear as a bell, Michael intoning through the creature's mouth, and nothing was ever easy, not this easy. And that nothing was ever clean. This wouldn't be clean, eternal footman. A check were ready to smirk in the bill. No escape. This couldn't end like this because nothing was 
really ended. Matter simply deformed. That's what the purple people eaters wanted to tell us. Why they sent a representative across the misspoiled Milky Way to spread the word. Blonde laughed at me with her eyes. Did through most frightfully. My wife's head did superpose and shivered there. Rippling with static, frozen in the time. I picked up the girl and I thought about my dogs and she slept, kept in a divorce. I thought as she was when we met, when she told me that it was over, this a body voice replayed my hair, promising I'd never be over. I wished I'd run after John, wished I'd rescue Poe from a trash can grave. Maybe I could put the gun down, get in the car, do just that. But this universe, I've already squeezed the trigger. D.V.G. and Michael were right. L. and his demons spokes. Puppets were right. Nothing's different. Nothing changes. Lasts longer, though.